Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. We bless you. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name, God. Lord, you worthy of the praise, God. You worthy of the glory and the honor, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We come before you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the blessed Savior, the risen Savior. Father, we come gladly, God, rejoicing, oh God, praising and honoring you, God, for yet another day in the land of the living, oh God. Oh God, another day on top of the ground, oh God. Another day to worship you, God. Another day, oh God, to extend our gratefulness, our gratitude, oh God. Oh God, to lift it up toward heaven for all that you do for us, oh God. Lord, we ask that you look down on us in this service today, God. God, we ask that you move by your spirit, move by your power, God. Lord, we ask that you move by your holy anointing, oh God. Oh God, I thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for what I feel right now with my soul, God. God. Oh God, you are faithful, you are good, you are kind, you are mindful, God. Oh God, we ask that you bless, oh God, from beginning to end, oh God. Oh God, because all we do, God, we render it unto you, God. Oh God, for you to get the glory, for you to get the honor, for you to get the praise, God. It is not of ourselves, God. We want you to be glorified with our sacrifice, God. We want you to be glorified with the praises and with, and with the rejoicing of our mouths, oh God, with the clapping of our hands, oh God, with the preaching and the teaching of our word, oh God. Oh God, it's for your glory, for your honor, God. Oh God, to feed and bless your people, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God. Word our mouths, Lord God. Let no flesh glory in your presence, God. Oh God, in Jesus' name, oh God. Lord, we come against that devil right now, God. We come against the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, we rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Oh God, we come in willing with a man to fight, oh God. Oh God, knowing that we may have opposition, God. But we come and we rebuking the devil, taking authority, oh God, over him right now in Jesus' name. To you be the glory, God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen, amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. God is good. God is great. And certainly he is worthy of the praise. Amen. When you got it, the scripture lesson text on today in our Sunday school lesson we come in. Amen. Lesson number two, December 10th, 2023. Amen. A year is almost over. Amen. 2023. Amen. God has brought us from a long way. Amen. Some of us had it harder than others during this year. But God has been faithful. The song said he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I feel that in my soul, y'all. Amen. But God has been good to all of us. Even you that's listening, God has been good to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I praise God. I rejoice in the word of God. Yes, I do. Amen. It's the word. Amen. The word of God that liveth and abideth forever. It's the word that gives us life. Hallelujah. It's the word that keeps us encouraged. It's the word that strengthens us. A song is good. God will give you a song too. Amen. Yes, he will. Amen. But in a time of a storm, in a time of a battle, in a time, amen, when we're going through with the enemy, I need the word of God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that word of God, it got power. Songs is edifying. Mm -hmm. But I am not ashamed. Here it is. Of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. Amen. In this Sunday school lesson, counting all things lost. Amen. I just want to read that golden text over, over again. It said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. And how many know that's a mindset that each and every one of us as individuals have to have had in order to be saved and those that have to have in order to get saved. 
Oh yes, counting all things lost. Amen. Counting all things lost, lost for Christ. And that means in order to please Christ, in order to have Christ, in order to possess Christ Jesus, in order to obtain, hallelujah Jesus, this salvation that we have through Christ, amen, it takes a sacrifice. Oh yes, it does. It takes giving up some things. It takes being able to detach yourself from certain things in order to have him. Because how many know, amen, you cannot have God still in sin. Oh, no, no, no. Amen. So whatever it takes to please God, whatever it takes to obtain eternal life, God, I'm willing to let whatever it is that I got to let go. And how many know when you come to God, when you come to Christ in order to be saved, amen, we have to repent of our sins with a mind willing to let go of the world. Yes, Lord, because sinner, amen, you cannot have God, you cannot obtain Christ and still in sin. You got to let sin go. And that's what we had to do, count all things lost, meaning I'm willing to let it go. Amen. I'm willing to, to sacrifice and give it up. It's goodbye world. I'm gone. I'm going on with Jesus to my brand new home. I'm willing, hallelujah, to sanctify myself and anything that we don't have the power in Jesus to sanctify ourselves from, God will give us, amen, the power and he will come in and break those yokes in our lives. How many know that I'm right about that? Amen. Because there are some things that God will require you to lose, to lose, to let go but then there's some things beloved of God that we have been attached us to ourselves to for so long that those things become a stronghold those things become bondage those things become a weight those things become chains and shackles amen but when you come to Jesus in a sincere heart with a sincere mind amen to serve God to live for God amen to give up whatever it is that it takes to serve him amen God will break those chains God will break those habits God will break those yokes in your life and then once he break those things from you it's in order for you to maintain that new freedom that you have in God amen because the Bible said amen to amen to stand stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ have made you free and be not entangled again with that yoke of bondage so those things that you counted lost for Christ amen when you get saved and you give your life to God amen it's up to us and an imperative for us amen Amen. To keep ourselves free from those things. Because how many know the devil will try you? Yes, he will, beloved. The devil will bring them same things that God delivered you from. He'll bring those same things back. Amen. To try to snare and trap and entangle you again. And that's why the Bible said in Peter, Peter said, through the Holy Ghost, amen, as it is true, a true proverb, as a soul that was washed in a wallowing, going back to her wallowing again in the Maya and that dog, amen amen, going back to his own vomit, amen, meaning those things that God have delivered you from, you have regurgitated and, and got out of your system and got up out of your body, got up out of your spirit, amen, those the same thing that they go back and eat up again, like a nasty, filthy dog, amen, but we need to be free, we, in order to be free, we got to be willing to give up whatever it is that God want us to give up, amen, and stay free from those things, stay separated from those things and have that conversion, mind. Yes, a mind of conversion. A mind, amen, a, a conversion experience. That's what this is talking about. Paul, amen, during this lesson, we're going to get into it. Amen. But he had that conversion mindset. Amen. Willing to give up the world and willing to give up the things of the world. Amen. And in Paul's case, willing, willing to give up that self-righteousness. Willing to give up those works that he was doing in order to try to, amen, be accepted of God. Willing to give up his own efforts in order to obtain God. How many know we cannot work for salvation. But how many know that it do take works to maintain salvation? Oh yes it does. Amen. Righteousness is a gift. It's the gift of God through faith. The righteousness of God through faith. Amen. Righteousness is given. We deem righteous and justified by faith when we have peace with God. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ our Lord so we cannot work upon salvation. Oh all it takes is a surrendered heart and a willing to give it up. Amen. But when God makes us righteous and we deem righteous and God wipe our slate clean and God free us from our sins it's up to us to maintain now the Bible said a pattern of good works 
Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. But Paul, he had that conversion mind. Hallelujah. He was willing to give up the world and all, all, all. Somebody say all. All that was in the world. And that's the type of mindset we got to have, God, whatever it is that you want me to give up. I'm willing to give up it all. And how many know God will try you? God will test you on some things. Amen. God will prove you. God will try you to see what's in your heart for you to see it, for you to know, because God already know. But he want you to see what's in your heart. Peter, does do thou love me more than these? Yea, Lord. Amen. Thou knowest that I love thee. He tried, Peter. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And God will sometimes try us with our attachments. Yes, Lord. Sometimes God will try us, amen, with the things that we are attached to, things that's, amen, this is a subject that's dealing with our attachments, things that we have to be detached from in order to get attached to something else, amen, which is Jesus Christ, oh yes, Lord, amen, and that's that perspective, that's that mindset that we all got to have, counting all things lost, that's a perspective that we, as the partakers of Jesus Christ, that we, as the children of God, we got to have that mindset of, Amen. Where earthly gain means nothing. Hallelujah. Where earthly prestige and worldly material things means nothing with God. Amen. In order to obtain salvation, I'd rather have Jesus than this whole wild world. Because the Bible said, beloved, what doeth it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen. So we got to mind our attachments. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Where earthly attachments and earthly gains, earthly prestige, amen, it means nothing in comparison with the worth, hallelujah, of gaining Christ Jesus. I think I'm going to say that again. I said we got to get to that place where earthly attachments and er earthly gains means nothing in comparison to the worth, hallelujah, of gaining Christ and salvation and knowing him. Yes, Lord. Amen. Counting all things lost for the sake of Christ. That's a matter of a choice. Yes, Lord. That's a choice. Choosing, choosing, choosing rather to count all things lost. Choosing. Amen. And deliberately choosing. And that's a continual choosing to value Christ, to value him, to value the kingdom of God, to value eternal life, to value what, what, it, what it means to please God over above all things that are in the world. The Bible said that if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose, there go that choice. Mm -hmm. Choose you this day who you gonna serve. We all had to cross this way. Mm -hmm. We all had to make that choice to turn from sin to God, to, to turn from the fashions of the world to God, Amen. to turn from the pleasures of the world mm -hmm. to God. And that's a constant and a continual decision that we got to continually make. And that's a constant and continual decision that's influenced by faith. Choosing God and choosing, a, a cho choosing Jesus Christ over the things of the world and over sin and shame. That's a deliberate choice that we make that's influenced by faith because I believe. Hallelujah. In the risen Savior. I believe that Christ died for my sins. I believe that Christ shed his blood in order for me to have remission of sins. I believe that he can save me from my sin. I believe that there's a death and a lake of fire. I believe in the second death. I believe, amen, where there's going to be weeping and gnashing and, amen, of teeth where the worm dies not and the fire's not quenched. I believe. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, I believe. Amen. Amen. To count all things lost, that requires trust in God. You can't count things lost if you don't trust in Christ. Amen. I told you it's influenced by faith. Counting all things lost requires trust in God and belief in his promises. I believe that if I give up, that I, if I give up this world, if I give up my desires, if I give up, amen, the lifestyle that I'm living, that I have eternal life. I believe that if I give up this sinful nature, amen, to partake of his holy nature, that he'll keep me from falling and to present me faultless. I believe, amen, that I can stand before God blameless. I believe, amen, that when Christ come, amen, that I will be caught up 
in the resurrection partaker amen of that resurrection when the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise then we that which are alive and remain shall be caught up I believe Wait it up, aha. I believe God. Yes, Hallelujah. That faith and that conviction, amen, that of eternal life, that faith and that conviction of the eternal rewards with Christ, I believe that's far more valuable than this earthly things of the world. I believe it. I believe it. Somebody say, I believe it. I believe. Oh, yes, I believe. I believe. Yes. Counting all things lost is a willingness to forsake those sinful and pleasures, willingness to, pers to forsake, amen, those personal desires for his sake. I believe, amen, that counting all things lost, amen, beloved, amen, that there's, there's gifts and rewards, amen, that God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, God, I believe, amen, Paul, he was believing in God, amen, how many know that counting all things lost in Christ, and, and even in our lives, even up to this day and hour right now, amen, sometimes it requires us to count all things lost, sometimes require us, amen, to prioritize, Hallelujah, Jesus. Things of the flesh, things, amen, like prioritizing time in prayer, prioritizing time in Bible study, prioritizing our time in seeking the face of God, amen, for the sake of that TV, for the sake of entertainment. I'm talking about counting all things lost, even some of these not sinful things, even some of these things that's not sinful. Amen. Prioritizing our leisure time for God. Prioritizing, hallelujah, Jesus, entertainment for Jesus. Yes. To seek God in that secret place. Uh, because he that seeketh God shall find him. He that call upon him, God shall be near in that secret place. He that abide yes. in that secret place of the Almighty. The Bible says, shall abide under the shadow. Yes. Amen. So I believe that. So TV, you got to get turned off sometime. Facebook, you got to get turned off sometime. YouTube got to get turned off sometime. Hallelujah, Jesus. Am I right about it? Oh, yes. I'm talking about counting all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Loss requires losing. Y'all listening to me? Loss requires losing, giving up, letting go. Of some things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Counting all things lost, that's a part of sacrifice. Yes, Lord, the act of giving up something that's highly valued to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because what might be highly valued to you might mean nothing to me. Yeah, how I many know sometimes we fall into things, video games, things like that? <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. But counting loss, meaning I'm willing to give it up, something that was highly valued to me. Amen. For something considered of more value, of greater value, denying ourselves. Just talking about the, the, the topic of counting all things lost. What do that really mean? Amen. Denying yourself. It, it, it entails denying yourself. It entails refusing yourself to have something God wants you to let go. Oh, yes. Refusing yourself to keep something in order to gain something from God. Amen. Keeping yourself from something in order to gain something from God. Mm. I count all things lost for Christ. Yes, Lord. In order to offer Christ your life, sinner, talking to sinners, because this is recorded, y'all. Amen. To offer Christ your life, you got to be willing to count all things and all other things lost. So trying to hold on to the world and try to hold on to the things of the world, offering Christ your life ain't going to work. Amen. You got to let go of the world. Hallelujah. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man try to come to Jesus and, the love of the, and have the love of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And you can't even get the love of the Father in you with the love of the world still in you. You got to have a change of heart and a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of attitude toward the sins that you're committing. You got to get tired of the sins that you're committing. Yes, you do. And I know some might not understand that, but every soul that come to God 
got to have a mind that I'm tired of seeing. Because you will never get rid of sin as long as you want to hold on to it. Hallelujah, Jesus. To truly follow Christ, we must be willing to let go of all earthly attachments. Comparing all things lost is not just a physical letting go. But it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Letting it go from your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. A disconnect from those things from your heart. Not just putting it down. But, but if it's still in your heart, you're going to go back and pick it up again. Amen. That's why God said a new heart. A new heart. A new heart will I give you. A new heart that's holy, a new heart that's perfect in righteousness, a new heart, amen, that's willing to separate and detach these cells from it and a willingness to uh, attach itself to God and to the kingdom of God, to the work of God and to know Christ. The Bible said for where your heart is, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Oh, I'm in the word. Amen. We're going to try to get into this scripture lesson text here a little bit. Amen. Thank God for everybody that's in the house of God. I love like-minded people. I love saints of God that come to worship God in spirit and the truth. You can feel. Well, let me speak for myself. I can feel when people have a hunger for the word. I can feel when people are receptive of the word. Just like I can feel that hardness. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, you can feel when people ain't being receptive to the word of God. Yeah. Amen. But I could feel when people come in, saints, they love that word. Yes. Amen. And we love the word. That word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. Philippians 3 and 7 says, For what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. So gain, by definition, is something important, something of value, something that you value. Gain. Amen. So when it comes to Christ living for him and wanting to be saved, to be saved our values got to shift. Yeah. Oh, yes, Lord. Our priorities has to shift. Hallelujah, Jesus, from worldly to spiritual, from self to Christ. Amen. Got to shift. It's no more I. It's no more about me. It's no more about living after the flesh altogether, pleasing myself altogether. But it's about pleasing God. Amen. And God will help us to let things go. God will help us to count all things lost. No longer altogether about pleasing myself but pleasing Christ. See Paul after his conversion, uh, before his conversion he was a Pharisee. Paul was talking here when he was talking about when he was known as Saul before his conversion when he was a Pharisee. Paul he took pride amen in his status. Yes he did. Paul he took pride amen in his uh, adherence to Jewish laws and customs. Paul, he took pride in that status that he had in those traditions. That was a part of his life that he considered gain. But how many know when you get saved, pride got to go? Right. Oh, glory to God. Pride got to go. Amen. All that self-prestige that you had in the world, that admonition of people and all about you and being recognized of people, all your worldly achievements and things that you've accomplished, success, all that got to go for Christ. Amen. Understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about in order to obtain Christ. Yes, Lord, because you cannot work. You can't keep one jot of the law. Amen. In order to gain salvation. No, you cannot. Obedience to the law is what we do in order to maintain salvation. You cannot obey the laws and obtain salvation that way. That's what Paul was trying to do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, but those things that he considered gain, trying to work on the law, trying to do works to be accepted of God, those was the things that he counted gain. A lot of them back then felt like if they just keep the law, I've been keeping that. Jesus, what must Nicodemus? What must I do to be, you know, I, I, Jesus, I did that since for my youth. They felt like that was what it took in order to gain salvation. 
Amen. But once, Christ, once uh, Paul humbled himself, once he met Christ, once he had that encounter with Jesus, hallelujah, ah, amen, on the road to Damascus, he humbled himself, amen, and he counted, began to count those former things as loss in order to gain Christ, amen, hallelujah, and that old man, that sinful man, that worldly man, amen, it means nothing now to us, amen, in order to gain God, I'm willing to let go of that old man, amen, amen, putting the old man to death, crucifying the flesh and affections and the lusts thereof in order to gain God, in order to gain uh, salvation and eternal life. Uh, coming to God requires giving up that old man, that former life. Uh, it means giving up a man and not wanting anything, amen, that God don't want me to have in order to gain him. Uh, so now that old man is dead, is buried, is passed away, uh, and behold all things, now I become new. Uh, now I'm a new creature in God. I'm new in God. Uh, my mind is new. My attitude is new. My perception and perceiving, uh, amen, things of God is now made new in Jesus is buried is dead is gone Amen. hallelujah we got to make sure that we keep that old man dead because yes, flesh will rise up again Amen. yes Lord Amen. passed away it's dead it's no more to be seen on this earth again amen some people when they try you Amen. You better be glad I'm saved because I remember when I used to see saints of God, we don't have that type of attitude. We count those things lost. I'm glad I'm delivered. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm changed. I'm glad I'm, I've been free, amen, from that attitude spirit I had. Amen. That, that raging and violent and fighting spirit I used to have. I'm glad I'm free. Now I know what it means to live peaceably with all men. In holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Verse number eight, say, yeah, I, doubtless, meaning no doubt, doubtless, doubtless, Paul, no doubt, no doubt, I count. Oh, that's personal. He said, I count. Hallelujah, I count. That's, that's what it got to be. We got to make this thing personal but this, but, but despite what others doing, despite what they still trying to be saved and hold on to. I count. Oh, yes, because it's so easy to look at other churches and other people and see what they doing and what they pastor might be letting them do. Amen. But amen. Even though that pastor might be justifying them, they still condemned by the word. So I count. Y'all ain't hearing me, y'all. Oh, glory. Yeah. Yeah. I told you I'm set for the defense of the gospel. Yeah, the pastor might justify him. But the word condemn him. Whoa, glory to God. So I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them. So let me see something here. Oh, look at that. Let me go back to that. Verse number seven said, but what things were gained to me, I counted loss. Now, in verse number eight, he said, yea, doubt, doubtless, I count all things. Y'all see that? So one is past tense and one is present tense. So once we count all things, have counted all things, we got to still walk in that. We got to continue to count day by day all things lost. That's a continuous mindset of sacrifice. Y'all see that? I counted all things lost. Yea, doubtless I count all things lost, even now. Oh, I got to talk. All things lost. That's a continuous sacrifice. So that continuous sacrifice takes a continual effort. When we make that decision to seek Christ, when we make that decision to follow Jesus, when we make that decision to give up the world, we got to continue to seek God. We got to continue to follow in that. We got to continue to deny ourselves, continue to walk for God, continue to walk for Jesus, continue to live the life that Christ died for us to live. Oh, yes, Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah. He sacrificed, didn't he? That's why we got to be willing to count all things lost. Because he counted all things lost. I love that scripture. He said, he who in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Man, when I read that scripture, that just, that just confounds me. Like, Christ was 
equal with God in power and glory and majesty. He was equal with him. But for the sake of these rebellious, stubborn, stiff-necked, hard-headed people, that's great love. Amen. So I value that scripture, y'all, because that took a lot. Yes. He sacrificed, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but, took upon, but counted himself of no reputation. No, I take it all off. Come in as nothing. And he humbled himself. He counted that loss. For your sake, for my sake, for our sake. So we got to continue to be willing to sacrifice and deny ourselves and count things lost for him. Yeah, it might, feel, yeah, it might hurt. Yeah, counting things lost don't always feel good. Well, I've been doing this so long and I just love doing it. But God, he'll change that love. He'll change that heart's desire. He'll take that desire of things that'll hurt you and harm you and things that'll put things before him, he'll change that desire to put it toward him. And things of eternal life, things that'll save you, things that'll, things that'll deliver you, things that'll free you. Because those sinful pleasures is bonded. You think you're free, but you're really bound. You bound by that. You bound by that pornography. You bound by that drinking. You bound by that smoking. You bound by those things. And you think you're free to do those things. You are free to do them. But those things that you're free to do, it's enslaving you. And you can't get free. But if you count things lost for Christ, be willing to give it up for him, he'll deliver you from it. And sometimes you will never see how bound you were until you become free. I have to talk to everybody. Amen. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb, meaning worthless, useless, that I may win Christ possess and obtain him and esteem him like the highest gift, the highest trophy, the highest achievement. Y'all understand what, they, what he mean by win Christ? Hallelujah, Jesus. Dung. Everything else is insignificant. Everything that I was doing, amen, to try to be received of people is insignificant. If I'm rejected of God, it means nothing. I got to please God. That's the mindset we got to have. I got to please God. So, Lord, help me to count things lost. Help me to detach myself from things that got a stronghold in, on me and I keep gravitating back to it even though my heart and my mind saying I want to be free. Y'all with me on that? Sometimes that's challenging. But God, that word of God, not the song, but the word says, as many as received him, to them he give power. God will give us the power to become those sons and daughters of God. Power to overcome and conquer those things that we was once bound by, entangled up and yoked up with. God will give us the power to deny ourselves. And then he'll begin to work on us and strengthen us in order to resist the temptation and the urge from the devil and from the flesh to keep God, to keep Christ, of whom I have suffered the loss. God ever asked you to give up some things? Have God in here ever asked any of y'all to give up some natural things that was normal things, normal good things, things that was sinless? So y'all can witness to that. God will ask you to be willing to give up some sinless things. Oh, yeah. Why? Again, to detach yourself from that so you can gain more through him. Because how many knows there's higher heights and deeper depths in God? The richness. Oh, to the no, the richness of his glory, the knowledge of Christ.
of whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung. I count them but dung. I recognize them nothing in comparison to when it comes to obtaining Christ, when it, up to when it comes to obtaining those higher heights in God. Those things is nothing. Yeah, you, you gave it up, you counted it lost for a while. But you're going back to it again. Don't you love me more than those things? Well, seek me while I may be found. The loss of all things. <laughs> Amen. So loss, that's not just material. Did you catch that? Those three words, those three letters, A-L-L, -L, the loss of all things. So that, that don't just limit things to just material things. That we got to count loss for Christ. But counting loss, that status that you had in the world. Counting loss some of those friends that you had in the world. Counting loss, amen, the, the status that you had with people. Don't you know when you get saved, some of those old pictures got to go to? Why are you still looking at all those old pictures when you was dressing nasty and worldly and full of jewelry and makeup and tight clothes and alcohol bottles and, and cigarettes in your hand and blunts in your mouth pictures? Why you want to still look at those type of pictures? Wait, man, you're supposed to count all things lost, even those old pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got to count loss even those friendships that we had. Yes, Counting loss the fellowships that we had. Old numbers got to go. I'm a new creature now. Yes, I'm a new creature now. So that fellowship that I had with the world, I got to count those things as loss in order to obtain and maintain my salvation in God. Amen. Hallelujah. My, that reputation, those, even those worldly possessions. Hallelujah. We had to count the whole world lost. We wanted to attain salvation. We had to let the world go. We wanted to obtain righteousness. We had to let the world go. And all that come and all that counting all things lost and letting all up go. All that comes through faith in God. Why do I say that? Because in order to be able to have that mindset in order to do that, it really requires true faith. It requires believing that Christ really is the Savior. Counting all things lost for Christ, you really got to have true belief that Christ is the Savior, that, 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 that God, through Jesus, amen, has these promises for you. If you do that, I'll give you this. Hallelujah. Counting all things lost requires faith. Requires faith because it requires prioritizing the unseen for the visible. Y'all catch that? It requires faith because it requires prioritizing the unseen for the seen. It requires the uh, temporal for the eternal. That which is not seen. Right? Hallelujah. So that requires faith. So verse 9 says, and to be found in him, not in myself, not having my own righteousness. I love that. Why is all these folk in church with these old self-righteous spirits? Self-righteous, like they, like they can save themselves. Don't you know, none of us had power to save ourselves. None of us had power to make ourselves righteous. So why are you sitting up in church with a self-righteous spirit when you don't have power to make yourself righteous? Yeah. Oh, help me, Lord. Righteousness comes through God. It comes by God through faith in Christ. Yes. Which is of the law. He said, but not be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, like keeping the law in order to be righteous. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we got to have the faith of, in Christ, that Christ, amen, who is the righteousness of God and the wisdom of God. Oh, yes, that's another name of Christ. The wisdom of God. Faith in him. 
and his works and what he did to make salvation obtainable and death and hell escapable. Hallelujah, God. To be found in him, in him, not, not around him, but in him. Yeah. So going to church, that don't save you of itself because you attend church. But are you a part of the church? Are you a part of the body of Christ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be found in. Don't you know being in is important? Yes. Amen. Being found in, in him. Because mm -hmm. sin will put you out of him. Mm -hmm. I got to say that. Oh, yeah. Sin will put you out of God. Be found. That means remaining in him. Be found in him. Be found remaining in God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain. We got to be found remaining. Standing. Holy. Blameless. Righteous. See, I told you it don't take works to get saved, but it take works to stay saved. Yes. Yes. Amen. Oh, yeah, take work to stay saved because in obedience to God is important. Amen. That don't mean that, oh, see, you religious. That's religiousness. That's legalism. No, that's salvation and holiness. Because right. if you love me, Jesus said, you will keep my commandments. Amen. And how many know the commandments of God is not grievous? Amen. So obedience is a major part of salvation. In order to be saved, you have to obey something. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. So it do take a work <laughs> to be saved. Because you got to repent. Ain't that something we got to do? Mm -hmm. Ooh, see, there's so much wisdom in this word, y'all. We got to repent. Amen. Without repentance, there's no salvation. So you have to repent. That's something that you have to do. Amen. And without repentance, there's no salvation. And be found in him. Through faith. That repentance. But it all comes through faith, though. Amen. Because if you, if you don't believe he'll save you, he's he not going to save you. I'm talking to everybody. If you don't believe he's able to keep you, you're not going to be kept. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. So I'm, God, I, I kept all your, I, I did good to my neighbor. I fed the poor. Though you give your body. I hear the word, y'all. Though you give your body to be burned. I, I gave, I seen this homeless man. I took off my hat, my coat, my scarf, gave it to him, put $20 in it. Though you give your body. I jumped in front of an oncoming car to, to save this old man that was crossing the Though you give your body, I pass out turkeys every year, hams on thank Christmas. I do, I, though you give your body to be burned and have not the love of Christ, you ain't keeping his commandments, you ain't saved, you ain't holy, it profits you nothing. It profits us nothing. So righteousness don't come through works, but in order to maintain the righteousness of God, which is by faith, it requires maintaining works. Righteousness comes through faith and not through works and not through adherence to the law. See, it don't come through it. You don't obtain it that way, but that's how you retain it and maintain it. We don't have power to save ourselves. Righteousness comes through faith in Christ alone. The righteousness of God by faith. And through our faith and repentance, we're made righteous. That's how righteousness comes. Through faith and our repentance, we're made righteousness. So once we're made righteous, we, it's, it's given to us and required of us to maintain it. Salvation is a free gift. Whosoever believeth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believeth with repentance. Because you got a whole lot of say you just have faith. But what about forsaking? You got to confess and forsake. You got to repent and forsake. 
but then you got to maintain it. We're not made righteousness because of our works or obedience to the law, but in order to stay righteous, we got to maintain that obedience to God's commandments and God's law, obeying and maintaining what God requires, obeying and maintaining God's word, obeying and maintaining, amen, what God requires, his standards, his commandments, what pleases him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that meaning the righteousness, which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith, that I may know him. And how many know that know him, that goes beyond head knowledge. That I may know him. That goes beyond just intellectual knowing him. It goes beyond head knowledge. It goes beyond uh, 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 that, that personal uh, thinking cognitive knowledge, but that personal knowledge, that experience that brings knowledge, that knowledge through experience, that knowledge that's based on devotion and relationship to him, that kind of knowing him, that kind of knowledge of him, personal experience through him, with him, that I may know him, know him because I have him, know him because he's in me. Know him because he communes with me, because he talks with me, he fellowships with me. Know him because he's in me. Know him by the understanding of his character. I know, I know him because I understand and know his will for me. Understanding and knowing his ways. Knowing him as a living and present reality in my everyday life that I may know him. Y'all catch that? Amen. A living and present reality. I know him because he walked with me. Because he talked with me. I know him because I know how I was before I had him. And I know to change this in my life now. That I have him. That I may know him. Personally. On a spiritual level also. Natural level also, both, that I may know him, both spiritually and naturally, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That was Paul expressing his desire, y'all, to experience that same power, to experience that same power that raised Christ from the dead to partake in that resurrection, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's the type of mind frame we as saints of God got to keep. I want to know him. I want to partake, amen, in the power of that resurrection to experience, amen, Christ being raised from the dead and have that experience with myself that I will be resurrected from the dead, even naturally, amen, spiritually, when I gave God my life, that old man was crucified and my new life is not resurrected, amen, but even then, amen, when Christ come back, I want to experience that truth. Amen. Catching away Amen. The power of that resurrection That's why we live in this life That we live in That's why we counted all things lost It took faith in that The eternal Sacrificing the seen For the unseen y'all I'm going to go back to it For somebody who didn't catch that For the temporal Sacrificing the temporal For the eternal y'all That I may know him And the power of his resurrection because I experienced the power before in my life. Ah, glory to God. When he touched me, when I called on him for salvation and he touched me and he broke those chains in my life and he filled me with the Holy Ghost. I recognize and I experienced that power before y'all that I may know him and the power, that transforming power. Yes, Lord. That transforming power, that power that gives victory over sin and shame, that transforming power that gives victory, amen, over death. Oh, yes, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Why? Because the sting of death is sin. But he gives us power, transforming power over death and sin. Amen. 
power that's from God, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection because it took the power of God to raise Christ from the dead. Jesus did not raise himself. Oh, if you examine the scripture, people, they feel like, well, Trinity ain't in the Bible. The word Trinity, y'all believe in stuff that ain't even biblical. Trinity ain't in the Bible. I hear the Holy Ghost, y'all. But neither is Bible in the Bible. You find the word Bible in the Bible. But you read it. Show me in the Bible. I preach what the Bible say. The word Bible ain't even in the Bible. <laughs> oh, my God. But if you really examine the scriptures, you will see. There are three. They're bear record in heaven. Yes, Lord. Three. One, the Father, the Spirit of God, and the Word. Jesus. Three. One, two, three. And it took the Holy Ghost, God, through the Spirit of God, raised Christ from the dead. That's three right there. God, Jesus, and through the Holy Ghost, he raised Christ from the dead. That power from God. Resurrecting power comes from God. And now Jesus, when he was resurrected, I can't leave it right there, y'all. I got to go on a little further. He said, behold, I have, God has given me all power. All power is given unto me. So now Christ has that power. That power that came from God. That power that empowering that empowers us through the Holy Ghost, from the Holy Ghost, to live holy. Yes, did you know that's what the Holy Ghost is for? The Holy Ghost is for you to live holy. And you can't have the Holy Ghost unless you're holy. The Holy Ghost is only for holy people. Why are you seeking the Holy Ghost and you still got sin in your life? You will never receive the Holy Ghost until you get rid of the sin. God dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Know ye not that you, ye, ye, you are the temple of God, if you saved. And the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are? Temple, that means your body got to be holy. How's the Holy Ghost in these people with so much sin on their body? They decked up like Christmas trees. Don't you know paint, makeup, that's a sin? Yes, it is. How you full of the baptized? See me tie my tie. And your temple is not holy. Know ye not that ye, your temple, ye are the temple of the living God? And you got to be holy. Which temple ye are? How you full of the Holy Ghost? Baptized with the Holy Ghost as an abomination before God. How? The Holy Ghost is a convictor. Well, they don't have the knowledge. Well, not that kind of knowledge and wisdom. Don't you know the knowledge and wisdom of God is, is for us to live a holy life? Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. God ain't going to keep you like that. You might, God might have, there are some certain circumstances where God will, but not in every case. It's rare and far in between because most folk know better. Most folk have done heard it. And the Holy Ghost, how many know is a convictor? People, they think the Holy Ghost is just to be seen that I got something. The Holy Ghost is a convictor. The, co the Holy Ghost is a leader and a guider. God got me going this way, Bishop. The Holy Ghost is a leader and a guider into all truth. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. It's to help you stay saved. It's to help you Keep yourself saved. It's that endowing power from God to live holy. The Holy Ghost empowers you to live holy. And you can't have it unless you're holy. That I may know him and the power. That's how I got there on that knowing him with that power <laughs> of his resurrection. Look at this. Oh, this is a part that get a lot of people. And the fellowship. Of his sufferings. Somebody say that I may know him. That I may know him. And the fellowship of his sufferings. And the fellowship of his sufferings. That's a willingness to share in the sufferings of Christ. That's the mindset Paul was encouraging, amen, the, the church, the Philippian church, with the mindset that he had. Hallelujah to Jesus. 
Thank God for holy leaders, y'all. Yeah. Oh, thank God for men and women that's devoted and dedicated sincerely to God that they may overflow on the church. A willingness, Paul said, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship. So I don't want, want all the glory. People, they want the glory without the cross, without the suffering, without the shame. But I want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings too, meaning I'm willing to share the suffering and the burdens that the burden that Christ bore. I'm willing. Do you feel like that? Now we know suffering don't feel good, y'all. But if you love and really appreciate what Jesus really did for you, Christ Jesus, if I gotta go through this, I'm willing to do it for your sake. Yeah. I praise that. I talk to God like that. It don't feel good. I thank you for what I'm going through, God. I promise you I talk to God like that, and I've been doing it for years, and I mean it. How could you thank God for suffering? You can if you're spiritually minded in that area. See, where I'm strong at, you might not be there. And where you're strong at, I might not be there. How many know we all on different levels? But I have, and I do. It don't feel good. What I'm going, it hurts. That's why it's called suffering. Amen. You're suffering. Amen. But do you truly appreciate the sufferings of Christ and what he gave up and suffered and endured in order for you to have what you got? So for that, that type of appreciation, not just thank you, Jesus, but when the suffering come, you in the world. When the suffering come, you can't take nothing. That's, that praise, is, it's got to be an overflow, y'all, of gratitude. Even when it, when it comes down to my sufferings, brother, yeah, it don't feel good sharing in that persecution. For righteousness sake. If I got to suffer in order to make it to glory, ain't it worth it? Amen. Didn't the Bible say that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us? Amen. What did he tell Timothy? Amen. If you suffer with me, you can reign. Amen. Willingness to know him in a fellowship of his sufferings, y'all. Suffering's going to come. It ain't going to be all hunky-dory and peace and a flower bed of ease and you rolling through the, walking through the tulips when you get saved, y'all. Because when you're walking with God, I preach this all the time. When you walk with God and you're walking with him, you're going to face that devil. Because the devil and God is in going opposite directions, y'all. They contrary to one to the other. So if you're walking with God, trust me, you're going to fight the devil, you're going to face the devil. But I'm willing. To run with Jesus all the way. Uh-oh, I hear something. I'm willing to follow Jesus all the way. Well, you ain't going far, my sister, with all that sin that you got on your body. Yeah. You ain't going far with all that sin on you. I'm running with Jesus all the way. How far you think you're going with all that sin in your life? Willing to endure his hardships and willing to endure hardness to share and carry those spiritual burdens that Christ carried. Completely conformed into the pattern of his death. That's what it means. Paul was willing to be completely conformed to the pattern of Christ's death. Meaning he was willing to Give up his self and his flesh and to let it be crucified and live a surrendered, sacrificed, obedient life to the point of death, even for his self. And we, as the people of God, we have to have that same determination and that same mind. I'm trying to hurry for the sake of time, but God is really blessing me in this message, y'all. He ain't got me preaching crazy like I, like I do. This is a teachable moment. And Jesus, when he entered in a temple... He sat down and he taught them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to break down the word line upon line so we can really get an understanding of the context of this scripture. Where was Paul coming from when he 
You know, sometimes we take things out of context and that's not where he, where he was coming from, which is okay sometimes when God got you going that way because God, he used this, his word. Somebody say this God's word. God. And he'll use his word however he want. Am I right? right? Yes, he will. But it's also good to get taught the other side too, which is actually the way it was written. With his stripes, I'm healed. He was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and with his stripes, I'm healed. You healed from cancer. You heal. That's not what the prophet Isaiah was teaching. Am I right? Right, but it's okay to use it if God want to use it that way. But think about what, is, what was the prophet saying. He was wounded for our transgressions, what you're seeing. He was bruised for our iniquities, which is sin, and the chastisement, meaning punishment, of our peace was upon him, on Christ. He bore our sufferings and our punishment that we rightly deserve because of sin, and with his stripes we healed. So is that talking about from cancer, diabetes, blood, glucoma? What is that talking about? Tumors? Is that what that's talking about? Being healed from? Or is it talking about being healed from sin? It's talking about being healed from sin. Somebody say sin is the problem. He's talking about being healed from sin. Christ died to save us and heal us from sin. God was healing people from sicknesses before Christ got on the scene. Am I right? Yeah. Exodus 15, 26, if you obey me and do whatsoever my, my will and what I command, let me paraphrase, I will put none of these diseases upon you for I, the Lord your God, am the God that what? Healeth thee. That's what's talking about sins, is, I mean sicknesses and illnesses. Don't you know some saints die with cancer? Yes. We die alike. We die alike. Oh, help me, Lord. Being made conformable told you, completely surrendered until his death, completely conf made conformable until his death, meaning obedient. Conformable means obedient. It means submissive, compliant, self-surrendered until his death, like he died. Verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. If by any means I might attain. Look at that desire, that hunger, that determination to be resurrected, to be raptured away, to enjoy eternal life with God. If by any means, meaning by any means necessary, by any means, meaning whatever it takes, whatever the cost, if by any means I might attain, that's a de determination to make it. Whatever I got to go through, Whatever God want me to do, I'm willing. If by any means, oh, this is some sound doctrine today, y'all. Sound teaching today. I thank God for it, y'all. I'm telling you, sometimes I be warfaring with that enemy. Those that's preaching sound doctrine and truth, they know what I'm talking about. Because the devil, he, he don't care too much about these folk. You know, you seeing, I seeing, everybody seeing. Oh, he ain't coming against them so much. But it's those that's really teaching people how to get to heaven. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And attain, attain means to gain or to achieve, to come to or arrive at. That's what that means. If I might attain, come to or arrive at or gain or achieve the resurrection. Look at this now. I love this humility right here. Y'all following me in verse 12? I'm trying to rush for the sake of time. Not as though I had already attained. Look at that. That's Paul's humility. Paul is, is talking in humility. Now, I ain't all that. It ain't like I already attained. But he's still talking about the resurrection of the dead. But now he's also hinting uh to the spiritual resurrection now. The verse above that, he's still talking about that resurrection of the dead. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained. So he's still talking about the resurrection of the dead, but yet now he's hinting at that spiritual resurrection. Yes. That new resurrected 
and transform life is where he's, he's shifting and, and hinting at now. Not saying he reached ultimate or full spiritual maturity. That's humility. We all learning. We all growing. I said it earlier, we all on different levels. None of us have it all. None of us have already obtained. We all learning, we all growing. Not as though I had already attained, either we're already perfect. Now that's not mean that we can't be perfect in what we know to be perfect in. That's not what Paul is saying. See, even Paul said neither were he already perfect. Then well, why would Matthew 5.48 say, be ye therefore perfect? Why would, well, why would God tell Abram in 17th chapter, amen, of Genesis, first verse, Abram, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. Why would he say that if we can't be perfect? Right, right. We can be perfect. But Paul, again, here is speaking, uh, 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 talking from a state of humility, mm -hmm. letting you know I haven't reached full perfection. I don't know completely everything, but what I do know, I'm perfect in. Right, he's talking here about continuous growth. That's what he's talking about. A state acknowledging of continuous growth, showing that holiness and salvation is ongoing. That's what he's teaching the Philippian church. Amen. That salvation and holiness is ongoing. It's continual. It involves a state of continued growth. But every level you at, make sure you're perfect in it. Whatever level you at, make sure you're perfect in it. Because he's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He's coming back for a people that's perfected. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Yes. So wherever you at in your spiritual walk with God, be perfect. And strive. That's what he's talking about. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. You see that? I'm following after. I'm striving. That's, that's signified by that state I follow after, which indicates and suggests an active pursuit. I'm following after perfection. I'm seeking for growth and perfection and completeness in all the will of God. Yes, Lord. In all the knowledge and will of God. Ongoing, continuous effort to walk as Christ walked. All of our goal should be that, to fully embrace and live out the purpose for which Christ have called us. Fully embrace and live out the life that Christ have called you to live. I follow after, if that I may apprehend for that which also I am apprehended of. Meaning to fully live the purpose for which Christ called me to live. That's what he's saying, y'all. Verse 13, I'm trying to wrap it up. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. So again, he reiterating humility. We can't grow unless we humble, y'all. Come on, Dad. I count not myself to have apprehended. Not like I got it all and know it all, but this one thing I do. Because how many know pride will hinder your growth? Pride won't let you grow. Pride won't let you see yourself. Pride won't let you learn because you pride of how you feeling like you know it already. Oh, help me. Jesus. Yeah. Humble ourselves. Pride. Amen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. I love that. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Forgetting my past mistakes and shortcomings once you learn from them. Yes, Lord. Because people, they preach that. Forget your past mistakes. But what about if they haven't learned from them? They don't need to forget them if they still not haven't learned because they're going to trip again. So forgetting your past mistakes Shortcomings once you learn from them. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Forgetting your past failures. This is what Paul is emphasizing. Forgetting that old life, that old man. That's what he's talking about. Forgetting those things, which are that old life. And forgetting that old man. The old ways, those old deeds. And reaching forth now. Mm -hmm. To those things which are before. Now focused on my future. 
Now I'm focused on what God has for me. Now I'm focused on eternal life and focused on God's will for me. Now I'm focused on God's plans and God's purposes and what he desires for my life. That's a forward looking mindset that every last one of us in here that's truly saved have. We all that save have a forward looking mindset. We ain't looking on the things which are temporal. Oh, we got that forward looking mindset, y'all. Over yonder. I'm helping God. I'm trying to wrap it up. Verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press. That means there's going to be a struggle and some opposition. There's no need to press if it ain't going to be a fight. But I press. God will give you that press. The Holy Ghost will give you that press in your belly, meaning to with all my effort, with all my strength, I'm pressing toward the mark. And that prize is the fulfillment of God's calling. That's what that prize is. The high calling, the fulfilling of God's calling which involves living a life that reflects Jesus, spreading the gospel of Jesus, and then in the end, eternal lives and rewards. That's what the prize is. But I like that he said, I press toward the mark. So he pressing with a purpose. Somebody say, press with a purpose. We don't just try to do the best we can. Doing the best you can won't work, but we press Toward the mark for the prize. We pressing with the purpose. I ain't just pressing toward the mark. Doing the best I can. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize. Oh, I'm pressing with a purpose. I have to reach eternal life. Forgetting those things which are behind. Pressing ain't easy, but it's something we all got to do. Amen. Pressing requires a push forward. Yes. Amen. Verse 15 said, let us therefore as many as be perfect. Be thus mine. Uh-oh. Ain't nobody perfect. Up there he said, neither was I already perfect, meaning full completion, perfected. But now here, verse 15, let us therefore as many as be perfect. See what I'm saying? Rightly divide. He wasn't saying that can't nobody live perfect. Why would he do that if he turned right around and said, let us as many as are, that, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Talking to the saints, those who are saved and mature, be thus minded, have that same mindset, keep that same mind on perfection. That's what he's teaching here. And if any, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. That word otherwise minded means to have a mindset or perspective that differs from the one Paul here is teaching of. Having an otherwise minded, you got a mindset or perspective that's different from what he's teaching of the mindset that he have. That's why it's important uh, when you don't understand to talk to God. That's why it's important when you don't understand, talk to God. Different way of thinking. I don't see it like that. I don't talk to God. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained. I love that. Let us walk by the same rule. I got to say this, Bishop, because I'm telling you, what people learn, what the saints hear and being taught is very important to me. Yes. I'm very concerned with what people learn and what's being taught. Where, nevertheless, whereto we have already attained. That is not saying what me and you done already agreed on. Let us walk by that same rule, what we have already agreed on. That's not what this is saying. And I will not use it in that context. He's saying here, nevertheless, where to we have already obtained, meaning with what we have come into the knowledge of. What, with, what God has already taught and revealed to us in his word on how to live. On how to count things lost, on how to suffer, on how to live holy. With the knowledge whereto we have already attained, with the doctrine and the teaching and the wisdom we already got from God, let us walk by that same rule. That's important. Why? 
because God have taught you a standard this high. But now the standards is being dropped this low. Why? Because you and me haven't obtained to that? Uh-uh. I got to still hold the standard which I have been taught. Why? Because to whom much is given, much is required. So with that same knowledge and doctrine which we have already obtained, let us walk by the same rule. Amen. Unity is important. Everybody ain't on the same level. Everybody don't have the same teaching and wisdom. That's why we got to be patient with people and prayerful. Because it's a shaky thing when you got people in leadership roles that's leader in a, leading a large, and they don't have the wisdom that we've been taught by Apostle Mitchell. Right. That's bad. That's dangerous, y'all. Why? Because that leader is going to bring his thoughts, his belief, their thoughts, their beliefs, and their teachings, and how they see it when your standard way up here. And those that's immature, that's not mature, they're going to conform. Because if the head is sick, the body is good as dead. But let us, whereto we have already obtained, walk by the same rule. And mind the same thing. Well, God has already trained and taught us in things that we have already received. That's a call for unity. He's calling for unity. He's calling for consistency in the churches. Don't you know God is too? God is calling for unity and consistency in the churches too. Oh yes, those that ain't, they need to come up. Preaching the same thing and walking by the same standards. Why? Because we got one God and one Bible. Where all these other standards come from when there's one God and one Bible? Don't you know the devil have done that? Didn't the Bible say God is not the author of confusion? Walking by the same rule means adhering to the same principles and standards taught by Christ and the apostles. Minding the same thing means having unity in thought, unity in purpose amongst the saints, focusing on the central truths of the gospel and living them out in a consistent manner. Not adding what we think or feel. Why we don't see it like that? Why that's their teaching? Or why we don't think that it means the way God wrote it in his word? The way God wrote it, that's what it means. Brethren, talking to the saints, brothers and sisters. Brethren mean brothers and sisters. So when you say brethren, that's brothers and sisters together. It, it ain't just men. I know it sounds like brother, boy, brother. But no, brethren is brothers and sisters. Be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Paul saying, follow me. And follow those who's holy like me. And whose life reflect the gospel like mine. Follow those that are strong. Follow those that are holy. Follow those that are righteous and godly. Those are the ones you follow and mark. He's encouraging the saints to watch who they pattern themselves after. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so, who walk like me, as you have us for an example. Watch who you pattering yourself after. Watch who you listening to. Watch who you feeding from. Watch who they look to for an example. A follower is a person who accepts the leadership of another. A follower is somebody who adopts and regards and walk in the teachings of another. We can't listen to everybody because everybody that's preaching ain't saved. I don't care what their title is. Everybody that's preaching and teaching ain't saved. Everybody that's preaching and teaching don't have the wisdom that God's given you. 
We can't be so quick to receive everybody's teaching. Everybody don't have the same wisdom and knowledge of God and everybody ain't preaching this. Everybody preaching ain't sent by God. For many walk, look at Paul, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Many, many, many. There's more lost than they are saved. There's more that's not of God that's preaching than they are that is of God. Many that's not saved. Many that's enemies. Many that, are, that oppose the teaching of Christ. Those are the enemies of the cross. Those that oppose the teaching of Christ. Those, there's many that's lost. Those that pre preach that, amen, they don't take all that to be saved. Those are the enemies of Christ. Right. Saints should be saddened by the condition of the world. Look at that. He said, for many of, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, saddened by this, y'all, by the loss. Paul was warning them before, and he's now warning them again to watch out for false teachers and false brethren who want to corrupt your thinking with false teaching. An enemy, real quick, an enemy of the cross of Christ is somebody who reject Christ and a, as the only way to God. Our enemy of the cross of Christ is somebody who do not believe that Christ died to take away sins. Somebody who do not believe in the penalty of sin. Somebody who claims that there's other ways to heaven outside of living holy. Somebody who, who persecutes and attempt to condemn the teachers of sanctification and holiness. These are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19 said, whose end is to be, whose end is destruction, y'all. Meaning hell, lost forever, perdition, whose end is destruction, whose God, whose God, they don't serve the almighty living God, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. That's who their reward is. That's what their reward is, destruction, for following their own desires, their own ways, their own pleasures, who follow the God of their own, their belly, meaning uh, uh, the uh, what they can have and what they desire and what they want to do. Living after their own pleasures. That's who they God is. They don't serve God. That's who, and they, and they end is destruction. Who mind earthly things. They boast, who mind earthly things. They boast in their sinful ways. They boast, they pride themselves in their drinking. They pride themselves and boast themselves and they living riotously and drunkenness. Mm -hmm. Smoking and partying. Amen. But our See that sanctification and separation there? Verse 20 say, but our, our conversation, meaning our citizenship is in heaven. It's up above. Colossians 3, set not your affections on things of the earth, but seek ye, but if you be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not things on the earth, for our conversation is in heaven. We're not, caught up, we're not so caught up and wrapped up in what's going on in the world. Not so wrapped up with, uh, with the worldly ways and fashions of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Why? Because our conversation is in heaven. We just so joiners passing through, y'all. Mm -hmm. We dress, we act, we live like a citizen of heaven before we get to heaven. God ain't going to make you look, act, and dress Holy when you get to heaven, you got to act, dress, and live holy on earth before you go to heaven. All right. All right. Amen. <laughs> Paint and makeup ain't in heaven. You might as well take it off now. Well. Let the church. <laughs> Amen. Looking for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 21, who shall, who shall change our vow body? That's what we focused on. And a vow don't mean sinful body. It means mortal body, deteriorating body. This vow body that decays, that get old, that go through pain and aches, that are vow bodies. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Because we, we will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. This incorruption going to put on, no, this corrupt. It's corrupt, that's to decay and sickness and pain. It's going to put on incorruption. And that's only for us, the saints. Everybody in heaven ain't going to have that glorious body of Christ. Let the church say amen. And look at that blessing. Look at that.
at that benefit. Look at how much Christ honors us. Don't you know everybody in heaven ain't going to have that glorious body that we're going to have? We're going to be special in heaven, y'all. We're not going to be subject to sickness. But there are going to be 12 trees with leaves that's going to be for the healing of the nations. So there's going to be people in heaven that still is going to have to eat to survive, eat to live, eat to be healed, but not us saints. Because we made Jesus our choice. Because we are the redeemed of the Lord who have been bought with a price. Who shall change our vow bodies that it may be likened unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. The power of God. In my closing, counting all things lost. It's about a transformable shift in our priorities and values where earthly gains and achievements become insignificant compared to the pursuit and knowledge of Christ. May God bless everybody that was actively listening and in your support and prayers. God bless you. Amen. Let's give God a praise for the word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word, Lord. Lord, I've shared with what you've given me to share. And I pray that it stick fast to your people.